in Tamaru City, but ever since we last said goodbye to Lesser Lord Kusanali, we haven't heard anything from her. Oh, we can't just keep waiting around like this. Let's go find Catherine and pick up some work so we can at least keep ourselves busy. Finally, I got to catch one of these Paiman lines after update. But before we do that, let me just change the team. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to a new episode. 3.1 is out. And before we do that, of course, we have to pull the gacha. And what we have for these rituals? First, we have Lisa who sent a little to sign up. Second, we have Razor to become a third catalyst for the ritual. Yeah, Sino is gonna be Razor 2.0. And then we have Alkan, even by the nation of the element, to attack the witch character. So, let's not dwell too much and try our luck. is gone. Oh, let's see if I win or lose pity. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know why, but I have luck in this gacha. Maybe because I kind of skip some and I really keep just for the one I really want. Yes! Now we just to have a candy store. If we have a chance. Okay, we pull for her now. And we got a candy store. Oh, there he is. i waiting for this guy for a long time. Give her the Lisa all set up. Thunder free for now. And we have get these two. Man, this looks fine. Ooh. Of course, uh, I may need to build both him and Candace now, so yeah. They're not gonna be present in the Alka Quest because this is kind of the end game now for this. I do try to lighten the mood sometimes, but I'm not the best judge of other people's sense of humor. You don't say. Okay, before. Yeah. Oh, the event is over. Like I was saying. Yeah, I'm gonna have him in the uh, next event or something oh yeah i forgot mustard event is up to let me actually yeah this is up so yeah i'm gonna go with the a team for this last part of the quest and what's that team hi lord the half alcan quest team Cole is here because, eh, why not? Barba and Sogon. No, you know what? Why not? Sweet with I'll Lisa. I'll keep an eye on you. Okay, we have this is team set up, and yeah, I guess we, you guys did not notice that thing. I guess we have to explore that when we get the quest. But yeah, let's return now to the city. Add 
Astra Avisosk. We meet again, you two. Hey, Robo Captain. Hi, Catherine. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. Say what? Uh, wait, say what now? And if possible, please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. Huh? What kind of commission is that? No, thank you. I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. Who commissioned this? In that case, please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Hey, that's not any better. Don't the orphanage kind of go to this, you know, classic anime setup? Mm-hmm. I'm sure the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Uh, Paimon's gonna ask. Just who exactly has been submitting these commissions to the Adventurers Guild? Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action. Wait, she actually can change the voice too? Was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Wow. Wait, I mean, this is in-game? Okay, I really need someone to actually log in because I want to see somehow she distorted the area. Okay, excuse me. Sorry, because I... This actually... Oh, look at that. How cute. Wait, what did she just pass by? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess he's still using Katrin as some kind of body. Ah, so it's Nahida. I just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? <sighs> From when she said, add Astra out of Sosk? So it's been you this whole time? Are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways. And I even had a really, really long dream. It was another dream about the Subzerus Festival. Except it was a happy one. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace. And everyone in Sumeria City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground. And I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, Nahida... Maybe your dream is how the Subzerus Festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait, could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? No! We are pitying you. That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Actually, I don't think we know where she stayed. I mean, she has her... her... House, but I guess he go back to her parents' house, and again, I don't know where is that place. Her condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. But for the moment, 
our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. Right. Who knows what'll happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the Subzeru's Festival. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the sage's activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Oh, good point. Uh, sorry adventurers, we're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. Oh no, our curtains. Oh no, our dailies. What are we gonna do? I'm kidding. Okay, where to go? Oh. Really? Let's continue our chat here. Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. I have an idea. Convince Sainai to take the chase position that he gets being bad about and use him as a secret agent. Perfect plan. We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After all, every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. I've already tried that, but all the key members of the Academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're wary of me. Have you already caught the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet, but this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. Okay, let me bring in Lisa because she's gonna be the perfect spy. No way, that's too risky. Oh, come on. You mean it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Temeru! Hmm... Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense, spill the beans already! According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, Rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm... That does sound like it could work! Are you actually... Wow, I wasn't too far away from this. And I was just joking. Oh! Before coming back, we met someone named Alhatham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the Academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Who again? Sataria. Paima remembers now. Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? 
I'm trying to recollect. Even is the one with the green hair that is Baizu's sister? Or actually I cannot remember. Wait, isn't he the one when we turn back to Tanai? Again, why use NPC when you actually have a Sabi's character? Come on, Mihoyo. We ran into her basically every time the sub -Zero's festival repeated itself. You could even say we're old enemies by now. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm hmm I've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sitaria has always stood out from the crowd. She was born in the desert, and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the academia, and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light up part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. From the sound of it, Satari is just hung up on the research opportunities here. But she doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. So we're gonna blackmail her to spy on them. Perfect. Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Sitaria will take a day off from the Academia every ten days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots, and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. This should be Sataria's favorite fortune-telling spot. Uh, so should we ask the fortune-teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh! <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding his future. Can we get a fortune reading for him? <laughs> of course, of course. In that case. Wait, wait, so now he actually whispered. <laughs> uh huh. It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Perhaps at some time in the past. You have somehow offended the gods. Hmm. 
Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. Do those count? <laughs> okay, just that actually. Perfect punch right. Nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Love prospects? <laughs> no problem at all. Um... <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. One who is fated to cross your path will appear on... On... Huh? So... So many people will fall for you? How could that be? Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> Everyone is kind of making heroes for him. Harut! Marut! Did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. <clears throat> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is, uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Is that so? Well, that can't be helped. If you were to bring some food offerings for Harut and Marut on your next visit, perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. Is this another one of Sataria's favorite stalls? Yep, it belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Samari City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with him, listen carefully to the details of her conversation. Ah, dear customers, would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice! You're making a living doing something you love! A few can do that. So is your father still working as a mason? A uh, mason what? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough Mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. No problem. Rest easy, all our goods are sure to meet your every need. This should be our final stop. Sitaria is always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything! <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samira's citizens, after all. Hi there! I 
feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah, uh, that's right. I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Liyue Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study, but failed to make it into the academia due to my lack of talent. But I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars, and I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the academia after their next round of exams. What an admirable spirit for learning! Amazing! Uh, sure, but you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh, first I've heard of it. That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time, employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. Guess that makes sense. Well, Good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. Why is that be odd uh, that uh, a place is gonna have a basement? I mean, I, I don't know what she's planning. Wait a minute. We're not gonna do the thing with the good cop and bad cop in the basement, aren't we? Maybe. 